morning, everybody. It is a gorgeous sunny day here in Virginia. It's a little cold. It was in the 50s this morning. Hopefully it's going to warm up. I have a birthday brunch for a girlfriend. I'm going to do a fabulous Eggs Benedict and Mimosa brunch for everybody. Excited. Okay. Lesson 151. All things are echoes of the voice for God. No one can judge on partial evidence. That is not judgment. It is merely an opinion based on ignorance and doubt. Its seeming certainty is but a cloak for the uncertainty it would conceal. It needs irrational defense because it is irrational. And its defense seems strong, convincing, and without a doubt because of all of the doubting underneath. You know, you do not seem to see the doubt. You do not seem to doubt the world you see. You do not really question what is shown you through the body's eyes, nor do you ask why you believe it. Even though you learned a long while since, your senses do deceive, that you believe them to the last detail, which they report is even stronger. When you pause to recollect how frequently they have been faulty witnesses indeed. Why would you trust them so implicitly? Why but because of underlying doubt, which you would hide with shows of certainty? How can you judge? Your judgment rests upon the witness that your senses offer you. Yet witness never falser was than this. But how else do you judge the world you see? You place pathetic faith in what your eyes and ears report you think your fingers touch reality and close upon the truth. This is awareness that you understand and think more real than what is witnessed by the eternal voice of God himself. Can this be judgment? You have often been urged to refrain from judging, not because it is a right to be withheld from you. You cannot judge. You merely can believe the ego's judgments, all of which are false. It guides your senses carefully to prove how weak you are, how helpless and afraid, how apprehensive of just punishment, how black with sin, how wretched in your guilt. This thing it speaks of and would yet defend, it tells you is yourself. And you believe that this is so with stubborn certainty. Yet underneath remains the hidden doubt that what it shows you as reality with such conviction it does not believe. It is itself alone that it condemns. It is within itself that it sees guilt. It is its own despair it sees in you. Hear not its voice. The witness it sends to prove you its evil is your own, are your, is your own false. The witnesses it sends to prove you its evil is your own, the prove to you that it's evil is your own are false and speak with certainty of which they do not know. Your faith in them is blind because you would not share the doubts their Lord cannot completely vanquish. You believe to doubt this vassals, to doubt his vassals is to doubt yourself. Yet you must learn to doubt their evidence will clear the way to recognize yourself and let the voice for God alone be judge of what is worthy of your own belief. He will not tell you that your brother should be judged by what your eyes behold in him, nor what his body's mouth say to your ears, nor what your fingers touch report of him. He passes by such idle witnesses, which merely bear false witness to God's son. He recognizes only what God loves and in the holy light, of what he sees, do all the ego's dreams of what you are vanish before the splendor he beholds. Let him be judge of what you are, for he has certainty in which there is no doubt, because it rests on certainty so great that doubt its meaninglessness before its face. Christ cannot doubt himself. The voice for God can only honor him, rejoicing in his perfect everlasting sinlessness, whom he has judged can only laugh at guilt, unwilling now to play with toys of sin, unheeding of the body's witnesses before the rapture of Christ's holy face. And thus he judges you. 
accept his word for what you are, for he bears witness to your beautiful creation. And the mind whose thoughts created your reality. What can the body mean to him who knows the glory of the Father and the Son? What whispers of the ego can he hear? What could convince him that your sins are real? Let him be judge as well of everything that seems to happen to you in the world. His lessons will, will enable you to bridge the gap between illusions and the truth. He will remove all faith that you have placed in pain, disaster, suffering, and loss. He gives you vision which can look beyond these grim appearances and can hold, behold the gentle face of Christ in all of them. You will no longer doubt that only good can come to you who are beloved of God, for he will judge all happenings and teach the single lesson they all contain. He will select the elements in which respect, he will, res he will select the elements in them which respect the truth, disregard those aspects which reflect but idle dreams. And he will interpret all you see and all occurrences, each circumstance and every happening that seems to touch on you in any way from his one frame of reference, wholly unified and shored. And you will see the love beyond the hate, the constancy and change, the pure in sin, and only heaven's blessing on the world. Such is your resurrection, for your life is not part of anything you see. It stands beyond the body and the world, past every witness for unholiness. Within the holy, holy is itself. In everyone and everything, his voice would speak to you of nothing but yourself and your creator, one who is one with him. So you will see the holy face of Christ in everything and hear in everything, no sound except the echo of God's voice. We practice wordlessly today, except at the beginning of the time we spend with God. We introduce these times with but a single slow repeating of the thought with which the day begins. And then we watch our thoughts, appealing silently to him who sees the elements of truth in them. Let him evaluate each thought that comes to mind, remove the elements of dreams and give them back again as clean ideas that do not contradict the will of God. Give him your thoughts and he will give them back as miracles, which joyously proclaim the wholeness and the happiness God wills his son as proof of his eternal love. And as each thought is thus transformed, it takes on healing power from the mind, which saw the truth in it and failed to be deceived by what was falsely added. All the threads of fantasy are gone. And what remains is unified into a perfect thought that offers its perfection everywhere. Spend 15 minutes thus when you awake and gladly give him another 15 more before you go to sleep. Your ministry begins as all your thoughts are purified. So are you taught to teach the Son of God the holy lesson of his sanctity. No one can fail to listen. And when you hear the voice for God, give honor to God's Son. And everyone will share the thoughts with you, which he has retranslated in your mind. Such is your Easter tide, and so you lay the gift of snow white lilies on the world, replacing witnesses to sin and death. Through your transfiguration is the world redeemed and joyfully released from guilt. Now do we lift our resurrected minds in gladness and in gratitude to him who has restored our sanity to us. And we will hourly remember him who, in, who is salvation and deliverance, and we will give thanks. The world, as we give thanks, the world unites with us and happily accepts our holy thoughts, which heaven has corrected and made pure. Now has our ministry begun at last to carry around the world joyous news that truth has no illusion and the peace of God through us belongs to everyone. Lesson 151, all things are echoes for the voice of God. Hi, Jimmy. Thank you. bring forth the most magnificent mandolin. Let's see what she has to say.
Greetings, beloveds. Mm -hmm. Let your voice indeed be the voice of God. Let all the words that you speak, that you think, that you feel, be the voice of God. It is indeed a shift in perception to make the journey from the voice within that is calm and still and quiet, that is tender and gentle and loving. But as you attune yourself to this frequency, understand, beloved, it is much like going through stations on a radio. <laughs> the voice for God is ever present. What will you focus upon? What will you listen to? And as you grant yourself these 15 minutes upon rising and these 15 minutes before rest, you give yourself a charge, a recharge, if you will, to be plugged into. You set the radio station to that of K-God. You listen to that frequency throughout your days. And in every hour, you pause to take a moment to listen to the voice of God. This constant reminder, this vigilance, allows you to see that everything is the voice of God. There has merely been an interpretation that it is otherwise. But when you allow yourself the freedom of knowing and of understanding that God is the purity, the essence, the innocence, and the truth of all of your thoughts and all of your beliefs and all of your understandings, you begin to defog the mirror you actually gain the capacity to see the truth of who and what you and all the world around you truly are. Every relationship that you have is a gift to you. Every circumstance that you are in is a gift to you. It is a gift from God to bring you closer. Can you find the gift, beloved? Sometimes you may need to dig through the muck and the mire. Sometimes you may have realized how deeply you have forgotten truth of you and the truth of all beings. But when you allow yourselves, beloved, when you quiet your world, when you come to stillness, beyond the din of the stories and the arguments and the petty grievances that you have within your mind is the voice of God calling you and beckoning you to listen, ever present, ever loving, and when you listen for this voice above all others, there is indeed a transformation that occurs. This is the point of coming into vertical alignment. This is the point of coming into the world of the truth, the truth that you are and the truth that all beings are. And you begin to allow yourself to say, there is peace within me. There is peace without me. Let there be peace with you and you bless others, and you forgive. You forgive yourself, you forgive the projections you've made upon another that says that they should be different than the way that they are. You forgive the judgments that you should be different than the way that you are, beloveds. And you come to recognize the Christ within and the Christ without, and you begin to see that all is indeed one and the same an echo of the voice of God, for that is the truth of you. That is the purity and the innocence that you are, beloved ones. The kindness that you are, the gentleness that you are, the very essence, the very fabric of your existence is made of God's stuff. So let this be your time of resurrection, beloved ones. Let this be when you recognize the truth of you and of all beings. For you know that where you are, God exists. You are the gods and the goddesses. You are the sons and the daughters. You are the brothers and the sisters. Allow yourself to revel in this truth. And know that what you hear are the echoes for the voice of God. For it is God's voice that speaks. 
in us and as us and through us. Allow yourself to attune to this frequency, beloveds, and hear the voice of angels as they sing. Feel the love within your heart as you listen. Know indeed, beloveds, that you are as God created you, as are all beings, with only love to give, with only love to offer, so swift to forgive and to forget. But forget instead, beloveds, the world of madness that has been made within the minds of men, and listen instead to the love that God brings forth with his voice gently speaking to you upon the breeze. Listen for the sound of the angels as they call to you. For this is your divine birthright and you are holy indeed, beloved ones. And when you feel that you have lost your way and when you feel that you have forgotten, allow yourself to find Allow yourself to seek and allow yourself to find your true happiness and your true joy. I bless you, beloved. You have my blessings. You have my love. May you find what it is that you seek that lives within. All honor and glory to God. love you and I will speak with you again. <sighs> I wish you all the most beautiful day. It's Memorial Day here in the United States and it's a day when we celebrate and hold in memoriam. All who seem to have died for a cause let today be the day that we die for the cause of our ego <laughs> and wake up in the arms of God. I love you all. I wish you the most magnificent day. And I'll see you tomorrow.